Good morning and a very warm welcome also from my side. Um, and I'm really delighted to introduce to you the all new ENY1, the all electric new model from Honda here in Oslo. Um, and I think you have already seen the car on a picture or maybe even on one of our recent media events. And um, I might presume that you have thought it is just a electrified HRV, which is not the case. And it's quite important to understand why it isn't. And I will guide you through the presentation in order to also give some reference to exactly that question. Well, starting with the concept of the ENY1, the the aim um, of the uh, ENY1 is actually to provide a um, advanced image, um, also to provide um, a very EV specific and unique dynamics, and also to realize the functional aesthetics. And all this uh, in order to provide to our customers um, new values, new sensations, and also new experiences. Now, how these objectives are being transported, um, the advanced image we try to transport with a smart and intelligent user interface, maybe even to create a certain affinity between man and machine. And the EV typical dynamics, well, this is, I think, quite clear, a smooth, seamless and very responsive driving, but also without um, getting car sick. So the motion sickness um, for modern EVs is more and more becoming an issue um, because of their very spontaneous reaction. Then the aesthetics. The aesthetics is based on a new platform family um, dedicated to electric vehicles as Honda. It's called the EN architecture, which provides a very flexible possibility for design. And uh, I will come to that maybe later in order to give more detail on this new platform. If we look at the packaging of the car, you will immediately recognize that uh, from the dimension point of view, the ENY1 is quite different to the HRV. So the overhang front and rear, they have increased by uh, 30 millimeters respectively. And that also results in a longer overall length of the vehicle. The other dimensions are more or less the same. Now, if you look at the architecture, the platform of the new ENY1, this is the base. This is called the EN Architecture F. And the F stands for front motor, front wheel drive, where the high capacity battery is located on the floor at a very low center of gravity, paired with a high rigidity body on top. Now the body structure on top of the platform has also been reinforced. Um, so what we changed is the amount of high tensile steel. So on the left side you see the HRV, where we use high tensile steel, 41% uh, in terms of weight um, relation. And uh, on the right side, the ENY1, where the amount of high tensile steel has raised to 47%. And mainly the increase in high tensile steel has been utilized on the floor around the battery pack in order to have a much better protection. Now let's talk about the design itself. Um, the design concept of the ENY1 was to create a smooth furrow. Um, with also a very advanced front face. Um, so what I was referring to earlier, to have a smart user interface um, with a certain emotional affect factor, but then also to um, create um, a, a, a modern design on the front, um, also to signify the flexible um, drivability of, of, of EV mobility. And of course, a sophisticated advanced design at the front, um, which um, integrates certain functionalities in the design. And how that has been translated is here. Um, 
So for the for the um, user interface, we use an LED heartbeat indicator. Now this heartbeat indicator, I will explain later, is a certain communication tool between the car and the user. Then we have a floating structure in the front, also creating a certain 3D effect. And we have used the charging lid um, in order to realize a grillless design, a very floating and smooth frontal area. Now from the rear um, you can see um, the new signature for um, the uh, battery electric vehicles from Honda um, but also the new um, dedicated EV wheel design is indicated here. Um, the nameplate but also the Honda emblem. This is dedicated to future um, Honda EV vehicles. Now let's look at the interior. Um, the interior design concept is somewhat inspired by nature and we wanted to create a cocoon-like atmosphere in the interior, not just from the cabin but also the seats are designed in order to really wrap around the occupants with a high resilience um, um, cushion and pads. We have the panoramic roof which creates a very open feeling and also um, the ambient lights on the instrument panel but also on the doors. They create a very cozy atmosphere. And this is how the real product looks like. Um, we have actually designed the front dash as a visorless instrument panel. So you have a very clear visibility to the front, very horizontally oriented. And in the center you have the big 15.1 inch display. And also here you can see the new EV signature of Honda using the white H mark, both on the steering wheel, but also in the center of the display. Well, speaking of which, the center display is divided in three operation zones. You have the lower zone where you have a permanent display of all the climate control so you can actually um, reliably and intuitively control all the climate related topics um, there. And then in the middle zone, this is basically where all the apps are located and also the uh, configuration is uh, is customizable according to your preference so all the frequently used apps can be brought forward and the upper zone this is for the display for navigation clock maybe also the camera when activated and also if you have connected your device this is where CarPlay and Android Auto will be displayed Now let's move over to the powertrain, the drive unit. Um, as I said, it's a, it's a three-in-one integrated configuration of the electric motor, the PDU, the power drive unit, and the gearbox. And uh, it is characterized as a high-revolution, high-output um, electric motor with the so-called SC winding. So SC stands for segment conductor. This means um, certain uh, conductors are um, bundled in, into segments and then welded afterwards after installing. And this enables a very compact design of the electric motor with an output of 150 kilowatts and 310 newton meter of torque respectively. On the right side, you have the battery. It's a water-cooled system, the water-cooled um, is very important to actually manage um, the temperature control of the battery both while using but also while charging. We will come to that later as well. The total capacity is 68.8 kilowatt hours and that results in an all-electric range of 412 kilometers under WLTP conditions. Here are some more specification so what I want to emphasize here is on one hand the very high efficiency of the drive unit. We are talking about 92%. So 92% of the energy you put into the drive unit can be used as drive force later on. Um, then 
we have also indicated here the usable capacity. So against the total capacity of 68.8 kilowatt hours, the usable capacity is 61.9 kilowatt hours. Regarding the charging, um, the battery can be charged both in one phase or three phase, depending what you have in your household. And uh, it's of course a CCS uh, charging socket with uh, a fast charging capability of 45 minutes from 10 to 80 percent. And if you just want to add another 100 kilometer during your drive, it takes 11 minutes, so just enough for a quick coffee. These are the three drive modes, um, which maybe changes the, 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 the parameters a little bit. Um, you know these three drive modes from other Honda models. What I would like to emphasize here on this slide is that um, on the Econ side, so the, if you have activated the Econ mode, um, there comes a so-called cooperative control of the climate control into play. And this is designed in order to um, maximize the range of the car by minimizing the electric consumption for heating up the cabin. And this is how it works. So on the left side you have the conventional control. So if, if, you, if you switch on the Econ, um, what it simply does is it reduces the set temperature of the cabin. And it also increases the band um, in which the cabin temperature is being controlled. So you have a much rough, um, a more rough um, control of the temperature, which sometimes occupants might feel. Now with the new system, with the so-called cooperative control, we actually utilize the driver and occupant proximity. So this means the steering wheel and the seat heater in order to warm up the proximity. And this actually increases the perceived temperature so that in the end we can reduce the set temperature of the cabin. And that actually um, saves a lot of energy because heating up the whole cabin volume um, requires quite a lot of energy. But by increasing the perceived temperature, we can reduce the set temperature. This is shown here on the left side. So especially for the seat heater, this is controlled below 15 degrees outside temperature. Um, we are controlling the seat heater in three levels automatically, um, depending on the set temperature of the cabin, in order to achieve still the ideal cabin temperature. And with that, um, we can actually reduce the set temperature of the cabin, um, which leads to power saving. We're talking about something between 2 and 3%. This means um, with a range of 400 kilometers, um, this um, cooperative control can save the range between 8 to 12 kilometers. And this um, could just be the difference um, whether or not the turtle mode will be activated. So that was basically for winter, um, heating up the cabin. Now on the other side, in summer, you want to reduce the cabin temperature. And for that, um, we also have this panoramic roof using low E glass, low energy glass, um, to help reducing the temperature in the cabin. Because it cuts 95% of infrared compound, but also 99% of UV rays. And it even cuts nearly 75% of heat intrusion into the cabin. And that really helps also here to reduce energy consumption for climate control. Dynamic performance. The concept and the aim of dynamic performance is actually to provide a very handy and agile, light-footed driving performance um, so that you don't have the feeling of driving a heavy battery electric vehicle. And there are quite some measures we've um, actually implemented in order to achieve this um, first main um, aspect is, of course, to, uh, to actually lower the center of gravity, which always gives a very dynamic behavior. 
But as, as I also indicated at the beginning, the tendency of motion sickness of electric vehicles have been cared for um, by having a very careful setting, especially around this lower um, acceleration rate array, um, area um, where it's quite sensitive for human being um, to have a very um, smooth operation of, of the accelerator pedal and the deployed amount of uh, torque. From chassis and suspension perspective, we have also implemented quite some measures. The first thing was to use a large diameter tire in order to increase the contact surface, uh, which leads to a much better road holding. Then the damping, um, the damper, they were all optimized in terms of uh, friction and also the damping characteristic has been adapted to the battery electric vehicle weight distribution. Body rigidity, also very important, not just for comfort and noise perspective, but also to have the suspension elements move very effectively. And last not least, the improved seats in order to minimize unwanted vibration in the cabin. In terms of steering, again, we have put a lot of emphasis to have a very direct, accurate and responsive steering characteristic by again increasing the rigidity and reducing the friction. So we have even reduced the steering hysteresis to make it more direct and accurate. Let's talk about range and charging. So this is on the left side, um, the charging um, characteristics of the ENY1 in comparison with two of our main competitors within the segment. Um, we believe the 412 kilometers of, of, uh, of range uh, within uh, WLTC is uh, quite competitive um, paired with the fact that we can charge also quite quickly uh, using one of the smallest batteries in the class. Now, if we compare the charging characteristic itself, um, um, so this is the charge performance in kilowatt. Um, you can see that, for example, against our competitor A, which has a very similar specification, um, we are quite competitive in terms of um, the charge performance because um, the red line on the right side indicates the ENY1 and the green line indicates our competitor A with nearly same specification. We can maintain the charge power uh, much longer um, due to a very sophisticated cooling performance of the battery. Whereas the competitor A needs to reduce the charge performance already starting at around 40% of state of charge of the battery. Now there are also um, many other um, customer uh, competitors, um, makers uh, claiming to have a very high maximum um, um, charge uh, power. We have here indicated um, our competitor C, um, which is claiming nearly double the, the, the charge power of 135 kilowatt against the 78 of the ENY1. But if we actually look at the um, charge performance itself, it actually starts with a high um, charge power, but uh, needs to reduce this charge power very quickly because otherwise the battery would overheat and also would deteriorate very quickly. Um, so the overall performance after maybe 60% is nearly equal also to the performance of the ENY1. And uh, I have to emphasize that, um, especially at Honda, uh, we are very keen to, to, to save the life, um, the life cycle of the battery um, in order to uh, maximize the durability, the lifetime of the battery, um, because we do not want the customer to suffer any deterioration in performance um, between the initial stage of the car and um, at lifetime, um, at the end of lifetime of the car. So we always want the customer to have a constant and stable performance. And from that perspective, we are very keen to control the charging power 
of the battery also by implementing a sophisticated water cooling system. Charging sequences, this is what I have been um, telling about the um, user interface so if you charge lid is open um, the car will welcome you um, with a small blink and then uh, if you connect the charging cable it indicates that it's warming up preparing and then once charging is starting it the lamps the blue LED lamps will illuminate alternated alternating um, and then if your charge is is finished if it's fully charged the blue lamps will illuminate both continuously there is also a warming up system of the battery so if the ambient temperature is very low it's warming up this is indicated by uh, the blinking two blue lamps this is in order to m maintain a high range um, when driving off to a new driving cycle uh, and if the ambient temperature is very cold this is this happens if, uh, if something is wrong, if the cable is not connected properly or if there is a fail-safe action, it will blink in red LED lights. Well, after that, if the lid is closed, it will wink you goodbye. Good. Now, safety. This is the whole list of functionality on um, advanced driver assist system of the ENY1. This is basically the modern and state-of-the-art suite of all the functionalities what you know also from other Honda models. And last but not least, since it's an electric vehicle, we also provide the Honda Parking Pilot where for all these five parking situations the car can control the steering, the accelerator and the brake um, autonomously in order to perform um, autonomous parking and for this parallel parking situation it can also actually park out the car from your parking lot so quite convenient this functionality and that's basically it for today from my side um, so before I pass over to Antonio who will um, guide you through the day um, I would like to wish you loads of fun, loads of excitement while exploring the all new ENY1. Stay safe and see you later at lunch spot. Thank you very much.